If you have a fear of flying, it is better not to watch this video. As Kenneth Chang portrayed it in his 2003 New York Times article, to those who fear flying, it is probably disconcerting that physicists and aeronautical engineers still passionately debate the fundamental issue underlying this endeavor. What keeps planes in the air? A recent article in Cambridge University's Journal of Fluid Mechanics seems to have solved a great part of the puzzle. The main challenge behind developing a theory of flight lies in the fact that Euler's equations of motion that govern the dynamics of ideal fluids do not have a unique solution, and each solution results in a different value of lift. So the first principles of physics, Euler's equations in this regard, are not sufficient to determine one of the most fundamental quantities in flight, the lift force. This predicament was solved independently by the German mathematician Martin Kuda and the Russian scientist Nikolai Zhukovsky in the early 20th century, leading to the so-called kuda zhukovsky condition. The condition is very intuitive. Luckily, our wings have these airfoil sections that have sharp trailing edges. The consequence of having these sharp trailing edges is that Euler's implicit dynamics predict infinite velocities at the sharp edge, which is unphysical. So Kuta simply picked the solution that is finite, that is, the solution that has a finite velocity at the trailing edge of the aerofoil. This is known as the Kuta condition and has served as a basis for much of classical aerodynamics modeling. But what if we have a smooth shape without sharp edges? This theory by Kuta and Tchaikovsky has existed for over a hundred years, but seems incomplete. This ambiguity does not exist if we solve the Navier-Stokes equations when we take the viscosity and no slip conditions into consideration. However, we cannot determine a general solution to the Navier-Stokes equations. And this has led to the, um, to the impression, the assertion, that the generation of lift is actually a viscous phenomenon which is not true. I've been working on this problem for six years now, and I always believe that the solution lies in the beautiful branch of variational mechanics. The main premise of variational mechanics is that there is a magic quantity that nature minimizes in every motion. This deep principle turns the whole science of mechanics into optimization. If I want to analyze the motion of some particle, instead of writing down Newton's equations of motion, we consider all the possible trajectories and pick the one that minimizes our magic quantity. That is the one chosen by nature. But what does nature minimize in every flow over an airfoil? When I heard Professor Taha pose this question, I thought back to my wind tunnel and simulation experience. And my intuition was that nature must be minimizing curvature. So I formulated the problem as one of curvature minimization. In other words, the formulation extracts from the set of solutions of Euler's equation, the one which minimizes total curvature in the flow. Well, it turns out that this recovers a classical kind of solution for sharp edged airfoils. When I saw Cody's preliminary result, I jumped. It's an extremely mind elating result, but we still had to link it to first principles. There is a principle in variational mechanics that is rarely found in textbooks of classical physics, Gauss' principle of least constraint. In fact, in Papastavridis, the most comprehensive book in analytical mechanics, he wrote, In most of 20th century English literature, GP or Gauss principle has been barely tolerated as a clever but essentially useless academic curiosity when it was mentioned at all. There's a special case of Gauss's principle that is even less well known, Hertz's principle of least curvature. It's a beautiful principle. It's already known that a free particle moves along a straight line. But if constrained, it will deviate from a straight line to satisfy the constraint. So Hertz's principle asserts that the particle will deviate from the straight line only by the amount that satisfies the constraint. Nature will not overdo it. And the deviation from a straight line is curvature, hence the name least curvature. So yes, Cody's intuition turns out to be deeply rooted in one of the forgotten principles of classical mechanics. Note that fluid parcels in ideal flows are free, 
the constraint to satisfy continuity. So according to Hertz principle, the right flow over the airfoil that nature selects among the infinitely possible solutions of Euler equation is the one that minimizes the total curvature. This new theory is more complete than the Kutz condition because it allows us to consider shapes that don't necessarily have a sharp trailing edge. And furthermore, and perhaps more importantly, this theory is derived from first principles. New chapters in aerodynamics books uh, will be written. The fact that this theory of ideal fluids reduces to the cutter condition in the special case of a sharp edged airfoil corrects the accepted wisdom that prevailed over a century. The cutter condition is not a viscous condition, and we can determine lift without resorting to the viscosity argument. This finding reopens the question that physicists thought to have settled. Can superfluids generate lift? As Anton Flettner once said, the treasures of the world of fluids will not disappoint the persistent explorer.